In this series, we are touring the UK and Ireland, looking for the energy solutions of the future. Is there a sustainable energy solution to our energy needs? We meet some prominent individuals and companies spearheading development of sustainable energy, and we ask them, how will the world make the transition? When will it happen? And are we there yet? Today, I'm here at Green Park Wind Turbine, and I'm here with Graham Cooper, energy industry expert and fellow of the Energy Institute. Graham, welcome to Future Models. Thank you. Could you start by telling us a bit about where we are standing right now? Okay, so we're in the middle of Green Park. It's a big industrial park in Reading. It's where the Medeski Stadium, where Reading play. Um, and for anybody traveling on the M4 motorway, this is quite a, a significant you know, visual point on your journey. And what's really interesting from my perspective is actually the middle of the Thames Valley is actually a relatively low wind area. And even though it's a low wind area, this wind turbine means that the entire business park is carbon neutral. It makes more power across the year than the entire business park uses. So even though it's not that windy, it's windy enough. Where do you see the, the challenges for renewables over the next few years? The power system historically has, we've turned power up and down to meet consumer demand. So the challenge really as we go forward, and you'll start to see this, is instead of turning power stations up and down to meet demand, we can actually turn demand up and down to meet power. Let me give you a for instance. So in the, uh, we're in the early growth of electric cars, you know, 2% of cars on the road are electric. In the last year, government have mandated that all new chargers have to be smart. So all that really means is cars will charge overnight when we're not using power, but the wind's blowing. What you started to see is demand management, you know, going up and down to meet generation. A question around renewables. Do you think we could ever be 100% renewable? I, the short answer is absolutely yes. And I can even tell you why. The UK's national grid has committed to run the UK on only clean energy by 2025. But the power system in the UK is mandated to be clean by 2035. So very comfortably within what's left of my working career. And that's a huge change. Um, but that change is exciting. Often people fear change. And don't forget energy and utilities is quite slow to change. We, the, the growth in demand has grown slowly. Nothing's happened suddenly. So there's no instruction manual for this, but a lot of really, really bright people are doing the modeling, the engineering, the innovation to make this possible. So Graham, we've talked a lot about renewables and the energy transition. What does it mean for consumers? Oh, it's a really good question because for your entire lifetime and mine, we've had energy done to us. You know, you read your meter and then you get a page of numbers on a bill that you don't really understand and then you have to pay something, right? So you don't really see where you waste it, you don't see where you use it. But in the world we're moving into, both having seen very high energy prices and seeing the energy transition, the bits that you'll see going forward really are smart meters. And people say, well, what does a smart meter do for me? What it does is it not only measures how much you're using now, but it dices it up across the day. So that means in the future, you'll see more and more things like time of use tariffs. So the companies making power from wind farms will give you cheaper power when it's plentiful, but the price might go up at peak time. The only way you can do that is with a smart meter. But what it also means is instead of still having energy done to you, you can participate. So if you think about it on your home, if you're a homeowner, you could put solar panels on your roof and generate your own power. So you talked about businesses. Can we expand upon that further, please? Because what does the energy transition mean to them? So I'm thinking about manufacturing organisations, for example. Firstly, the high energy price at the moment that we've talked about previously is a really good opportunity for business to look at where they use power. Because actually using less is really important. The cheapest and cleanest power is the power you never use. And so there's a significant opportunity to just use less, be more efficient. The other opportunity that you have in this space is, I mean, as we look around us, there are lots of businesses with big roofs. 
deploy solar on the roofs, you can generate your own. That will offset what you're buying in. There is also opportunities for businesses to buy power directly from you know, wind farms. So I'm already seeing wind farm developers developing wind farms and instead of just making the power and selling the power, they're selling the wind farm to people like data centers who are quite energy hungry. So I think instead of just thinking about buying a commodity, how do businesses become a participant themselves? I mean, you even see some of the car companies now are realizing with electrification, they might become energy businesses just because of the change in the technology. So when we look forward from here, it could only be four, five, six years time till we normalize electric cars. And then maybe only two or three years after that where we normalize heat pumps for our homes. So I know the transition might look difficult and uncertain, but we've been through transitions like this before. Graham Cooper, thank you very much. Thank you.